McDonald's. It's a company we're all intimately familiar with. We all know the company, we all know the business, but what about the stock? How does the stock actually do? How does the stock of McDonald's actually perform over time well? In this inflationary environment, in this environment where we've seen gross stocks getting pummeled down fairly aggressively, McDonald's is performing fairly well. Down only 6.73% on the year. Now bear in mind, this is the type of market where stocks are down sometimes 30, 40, 50, 60%. This stock is holding up pretty well. So why is that? Why over the past six months is the stock actually up 3.41% while the rest of the market seems to be feeling the pain? Seems to be down well, it's to do with pricing power. McDonald's, much like many other kind of discretionary consumer brands, has the potential to raise prices almost indiscriminately in an incremental fashion. You think about the likes of PepsiCo, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, these companies that have been bought up fairly aggressive recently, bought up fairly aggressive by Ray Dalio and a few other investors. It's because in this inflationary environment where pricing power and the space, the size, the durability of net margins become so important, McDonald's has that quality. They have the ability to raise prices. So McDonald's on a fundamental level, I got asked yesterday, what do you think about McDonald's stock? It's an interesting proposition. Is it a company that's going away? No. It's firmly entrenched as a high quality business. It has a firmly interest and habitual client base. People who consume this product on a daily basis. So, what about the financial strength? How firmly entrenched is it? How firmly entrenched is it? How much of a high quality company is McDonald's relative to the rest of the market? Well, the first thing we notice when evaluating McDonald's is that low cash to debt ratio. A cash to debt ratio of only 0.1. Very, very low. They could only pay down 10% of their debt outstanding before needing to look to additional operational cash flows to pay down those debt obligations on both the principal and interest-based interest -based level going forward. So naturally, investors have concern. Naturally, when investors see there's such a low amount of cash on hand relative to debt, naturally and in, in, in concern begins to ensue. But what investors are missing, what investors neglect when they see that low cash to debt ratio is the tremendous amounts of consistent free cash flow flowing into this business. Think about the sales McDonald's makes on a daily basis. Think about the margins associated with each burger, with each drink, with each packet of fries. Net margins of roughly 32.49%. A tremendous degree of profitability per item sold and naturally, that translates to free cash flow accreting on their balance sheet. Free cash flow flowing to McDonald's on a daily basis enabling them not only to continually reinvest and build out their business but also pay down these debt obligations fairly consistently. The tremendous amounts of free cash flow flowing into this company offset the debt-related risk associated with that low cash to debt ratio. So despite that numerically unfavorable number, when you take into account the underlying nature of McDonald's business, it's fairly high quality. That's reflected in the Altman score. An Altman score of 4.53, a high Altman score indicating that degree of financial stability. Yes, McDonald's sales may decline in a recession. They may struggle in a recession as there's less discretionary spending on food and stuff like this. But over the long term, is this company going away? Is this company going to default? Is it going to fail? I doubt it. Firmly entrenched, high quality business, recurring customer base, a high quality company. So financial strength is there. They have a recurring customer base. We know in an inflationary environment, they have the edge. They have that pricing power. So what about profitability? Exactly how profitable is this company? And going forward, how can that profitability be maintained? Well, if we come over here, operating margins of 42.51%. For a company of this size, a $185 billion company, and especially within the restaurant space, a highly competitive space, these operating margins are insane. On an industry basis, the very pinnacle of the restaurant industry, and historically for the company, despite its maturity, despite its size, historically, these are the highest operating margins they've achieved. That's reflected in net margins of 32.49%, as mentioned before. But yet again, on an industry and historical basis, very, very attractive. Also, returns on assets are fairly healthy. Returns on assets of 14.39%, indicative not only of a great degree of underlying quality in McDonald's business, but also a tremendous degree of managerial quality. The capital allocation within McDonald's clearly being executed with a great degree of acumen to generate high returns on assets over time. Industry basis, again, very, very high historically, not the highest for the company, but that's understandable given how much the company has scaled up and grown over the past several years. Naturally, that's okay. So, we know it's a firmly entrenched business. 
We know it's a profitable business. This looks like a great investment. This looks like a fantastic investment opportunity. So why haven't I bought? Why, despite the, the great factors with this company, the advantageous trends around the business, the continual consumption of their product, why haven't I bought? Let me show you. The current valuation of McDonald's has a P-E ratio, a forward P-E ratio, and a current P-E ratio around 24. The current P-E ratio of 24.95 and a forward P-E of 24.75. So that indicates a fairly high degree, albeit moderate, of growth assumption priced to McDonald's going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that this company will continue to grow at a rate around 10 to 15% going forward over the next decade consistently. Now, when you think about the maturity and scale of McDonald's business, how firmly entrenched it is, how grown out, how expansive it is, do you really think they're going to continue to execute 15% growth consistently going forward over the next decade? I think given the maturity of the business, given the scale of their operations, it appears fairly unlikely that that type of growth is going to perpetuate. And this is what I've been seeing across the market more broadly. These firmly entrenched staple companies with a lot of pricing power, the likes of Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, they are all achieving premium valuations. And it's a bit concerning. As investors run away from growth, as they run away from the FANG stocks, from Shopify, from PayPal, as they run toward those more staple consumer brands, these companies are now becoming overvalued. I believe within the next two, three years of these inflationary pressures subside, these companies are going to get punished. We're going to see declines because there's been such a large inflow into them. Naturally, there's likely going to be a pullback. That's just a speculative prediction, but let's actually have a look at this company on a tangible level. Let's actually value McDonald's and find out how much it's worth. Has that type of growth that's being priced in the stock actually been perpetuating for the business? Now, as I was saying, around a 14, 15% growth rate priced in going forward over the next decade. Now, what type of growth has actually been occurring? Over the past 10 years, growth of only 5.7%, growth of 9.2% over the past five years. And yes, on a one-year basis, there has been a massive jump up in growth of 59.1%, but that is more indicative of the lack of growth associated with 2020, associated with the pandemic. And so thus, there's a heightened growth figure on a one-year basis. So the reality is, this company's only been growing at around 5 to 9% over the past decade, and yet we're pricing at around 15% growth going forward over the next decade. That seems somewhat unrealistic given the nature of this company and given the scale of its business. So if we price in, let's say that 9% growth rate going forward, fairly reasonable. Look at the price target. The price target of $178 relative to the current trading price of $250 indicating a massive degree of overvaluation in the stock right now. And if we price in that 15% growth rate, you know, we look slightly undervalued. But that 15% growth rate for me appears very, very bullish relative to what the company has achieved. Does it change at all on a free cash flow basis? Does a free cash flow valuation differ at all from an earnings per share valuation? Free cash flow, of course, is of course the, the free cash flow accreting from the business relative to their earnings, the free cash flow that the company can actually use to expand and grow their business going forward. So what about a free cash flow valuation? Is that any better relative to our earnings per share valuation? Let's check it out. Let's price in that same 15% growth rate going forward. Well, it's pretty much the same outcome. McDonald's already has a large degree of free cash flow accreting on their balance sheet. And so thus, a 15% growth rate would seem even more unreasonable on a free cash flow basis relative to an earnings per share basis. With that 9% growth rate on free cash flow again, again, we have a substantial degree of overvaluation. Again, this is a market-wide issue I'm seeing. A market-wide issue across these staple consumer brands, the type of overvaluation that we were seeing in growth stocks a year, two years ago. This is the concern. This is what's worrying me right now. So many investors running away from growth. So many investors running away and running towards these staple brands, trying to find safety in this marketplace. But the truth is, the premium you're paying for that safety is going to diminish your long-term returns. Running towards these safe businesses, running towards the, the Procter & Gamble, the PepsiCo, it's just not an intelligent move. People are saying buy these stocks right now. If everyone is saying buy a stock, then you need to remove yourself from that situation. Think about really should I be buying this relative to the other opportunities in the market right now? Is this really the best buy I can get? Think about a company like Google. McDonald's right now is trading at a PE of 24. Google 
is trading at a PE of only 22. Which company is exuding more growth? Which company has more positive secular trends going forward? Which company is going to exude more growth going forward over the next decade? I think the unequivocal answer is Google. So why would you be buying McDonald's stock trying to avoid the fear rather than buying into a tech stock that right now is definitively undervalued? So that's my concern with McDonald's right now. Yes, a high quality business, highly profitable, large degree of financial strength, recurring consumption of their product. But right now, the valuation is just too off-putting. Relative to other opportunities in the marketplace, it just doesn't stack up. So if you enjoyed this video, if I'll give you some insight into my thoughts on McDonald's right now, the market more broadly, these, this movement away from growth and people running towards safety yet neglecting that safety, actually potentially creating more downside potential, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.